Hi everyone. In today's tutorial, I wanted to give you an overview of the waveform, the RGB parade, and how they relate to lift, gamma, and gain when you're working with Cinema DNG files in DaVinci Resolve. Now to start, I'm going to be working in YRGB color space, but after I show you an overview of the waveform, I'm going to switch into ACES color space to show you how the different color spaces affect the way luma values are being treated. So to get started, I want to give you an overview of what you're actually visualizing with the waveform if you're not familiar with it. The vertical axis of the waveform monitor runs from 0 to 1023, and that's allowing you to visualize the luma values from darkest to lightest. That is, your shadows at the bottom of the waveform monitor, your midtones in the middle of your waveform monitor, and your highlights at the top of your waveform monitor. Across the horizontal axis, this is actually a representation of your actual image reading from left to right. That is to say that the image that you have in your viewer is actually being represented pixel for pixel from the left side of the waveform to the right side of the waveform as it falls in your image. And you can see that in this example. The chart that I have here is running from absolute black to absolute white in even increments. And as you read across the chart, that's what's creating this stair-step pattern. So this bottom line from left to right at zero, that's my black bar. The second bar, the gray bar, is the second line running across there, and so on and so forth up until I get to my final white bar, which is represented up here at 1023 at the highlight. Now, one of the key functions of the waveform monitor is to allow you to get a proper distribution of luminance values across your scene when you're setting exposure. And one of the ways that we can manipulate this waveform to get proper exposure is to use the lift, gamma, and gain controls. And these correspond to the waveform monitor in the following way. The lift control will change my black point, the gamma control will change my midtones, and the gain control will change my highlights. So let's take a look at that now. If I adjust the lift, you can see that I'm pulling up the black point. And as I pull up the black point towards highlight, all of my bars go white. If I bring the lift down, you can see that I'm doing the opposite, bringing more of my bars into the shadows. The gain, as I mentioned, adjusts the highlight. So let's try that now. If I pull up the gain, you'll see I'm pulling more information into the highlights. And as the bars reach the peak value, they blow out as white. And if I bring the bars down, you'll see that the opposite happens. The gamma adjusts the midtones. So you'll see that as I pull the gamma up and down, my black point and white point stay the same but the distribution of midtones changes as the stair pattern stretches up and down to my adjustments. Let's take a look at another example. In this chart, I have the same luma values ranging from black to white, but instead of having isolated values, I have a smooth gradient running from 0 up to 1023. And you can see that reflected in the chart with this curve it's much smoother than the stair-step pattern we had before because all of the values are being represented across the waveform. These extra values that you see in here are being generated by the text. And as you can see from left to right, shadows, midtones, and highlights. Let's look at one more chart. This chart is showing a straight line through the midtones, and that's being represented in the image as this gray background. We then also have these white and black circles and you can see those being represented on the waveform at the top and bottom at the values of 0 and 1023. Now you'll notice whether the white circle's on top or bottom that I get the same distribution on my waveform. So now we've got an overview of the waveform and how it's representing luma values. Let's switch out of YRGB color space and into ACES color space and see how that affects the representation of our charts that we've been looking at. So I'm going to go into my project settings. And in Master Project Settings, I'm going to switch from YRGB to ACES. And in the lookup tables, I've already done this, but I'm going to switch to Cinema DNG and sRGB. And let me hit Apply. And then I'm going to close this panel. And now you'll see that if I switched into ACES color space, that my white point has been shifted down on the waveform. 
This means that my Luma value is being treated differently in the ACES color space than it was in YRGB. And this becomes even more apparent if we look at our earlier black to white step chart, where we see that now the steps no longer have an even distribution of values, but are rather being altered by the ACES color space. The same thing can be seen in our gradient, where instead of going from 0 to 1023, we're actually running from 0 to about 800. And I think this is an important point if you're deciding to work in ACES or YRGB color space, is that they're not treating your footage and your Luma values the same way. And depending on what your project requirements are or what look you're attempting to get, it may alter which space you want to be working in. Because ACES is actually applying a look to your footage to make it more closely represent a cinematic image. So now that we've discussed the waveform monitor as well as lift, gamut, and gain, and how the Luma values are treated differently in ACES and YRGB color space, let's take a look at an actual piece of footage and talk about how we can set proper exposure for our Cinema DNG clips. So here I have a clip of a piece of grass filmed on the Iconoscope ACAM D2, and you'll notice that by looking at the waveform, that most of my tones are centered in the midtones. That is to say, I have no highlight and no shadows. So to give a proper distribution of luminance values, what I'm going to need to do is bring some of the information up into the highlights and some of the information down into the shadows. So remember, my gain control changes my highlights. So I'm going to bring my gain up to bring some more of this information into the highlights. And then I'm going to bring my lift down to slide some more information into the shadows. I can use the gamma to adjust my midtones to a point that I like. And as I adjust my gamma, you'll notice that I'm moving some of my information out of the shadows. And so I can use the lift in combination with the gamma to sort of slide these up and down until I get a look that I'm happy with. Now one thing you might notice with this image is that it's a little bit red. When I'm actually doing my initial color correction and setting the exposure of an image, I like to use not the waveform, but the parade. The parade is similar to the waveform monitor in the sense that it's showing you the luma values, but it's broken each of these values into the specific red, green, and blue channels, hence the name RGB parade. And what you can do with the RGB parade is you can use it for color balance. So you'll notice here that I have a lot more red in my highlights than green or blue. So in order to correct the extra red in my highlights, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the gain down for my red channel. But as I do that, you'll notice that I'm crushing my red channel into the blacks. And so to fix that, I'm going to bring up the lift on my red channel and sort of work with these two controls until I have a look that's more balanced and a color correction that's more close to the natural scene as it was recorded. And if we look at the before and the after of this now, you'll see that there's quite a difference between the original image coming in off of the camera and my color corrected image. Now, as I'm switching back and forth between these, I notice that maybe my highlights aren't quite as bright as I would like. So I'm going to slide these up. And then I'm going to pull the lift down. So that was correcting exposure in ACES color space. But let's take a look at what would happen if we had been in YRGB color space and see how they're different. So first, I'm going to reset this color node. And you'll notice that my tones return to their midtone position. Next, I'm going to go into my project settings. I'm going to my master project settings. I'm going to turn my color science back to YRGB and apply that. And you'll see when I did that, it shifted my image up into the highlights so that it's quite clearly overexposed. So to correct for this, I'm going to bring my gain down. Then I'm going to pull my lift down. And you'll notice again, as I'm doing this, my red channel is out of balance. So I'm going to actually adjust my red channel by pulling down on the lift. I 
adjust my gamma for the midtones and then sort of finesse the distribution. And for this example, that looks pretty good. I know we've covered a lot of information in this tutorial, but hopefully it's given you a good sense of how to use the lift, gamma, and gain controls in conjunction with the waveform and RGB parade to set exposure of your footage, and also what some of the differences are between working in ACES color space versus YRGB color space when it comes to Luma values and how they are handled.